NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. Woo! Tax season is here, which means you've received or are expecting that tax refund any day now, and you're thinking about what to spend it on. How about a new home? With SaveWithConrad.com, we're helping renters become homeowners every single day, and it's more affordable than you think. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need a huge down payment. In fact, you may not need a down payment at all. At SaveWithConrad.com, we take the stress out of the home buying process. We'll determine your buying power. We'll even help you find a realtor. And unlike the banks, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. So if you're not ready right now, we'll get you on a plan to be ready. Stop throwing your money away, paying someone else's mortgage with your rent and start the path towards owning your own home today at SaveWithConrad.com. Right now, Fight Plus, the ultimate digital platform for live sports and entertainment, is offering a free seven-day trial at TryFight.com. Yes, you can access Fight Plus's incredible library full of combat sports, wrestling, and other premium content absolutely free for seven days by going to tryfight.com and the best part you can find them on all major streaming platforms available today so don't waste another second go to tryfight.com that's t-r-y-f-i-t-e.com right now and find out why they are the undisputed champ of live sports and entertainment symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hey, this is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. On the show today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite opponents, the whole effing show, Rob Van Dam. But first, let me introduce to you my co-host, Paul Bromwell. How you doing today, Paul? Hey, Kurt. I'm doing well, man. It's good to see you. Uh, hey, how was your Easter? Uh, we haven't recorded since yeah, then. Splendid Easter, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's crazy is... Uh, we forgot about uh, the Easter bunny and uh, three in the morning. We were like, oh, shit, we got to got to put that stuff out for the kids in the morning when they wake up. So we almost forgot about the Easter bunny this year. <laughs> well, dude, not only that, but you guys, it seemed like just from paying attention to social media, I had another dramatic event occur in your house and that's your real pet bunny. It escaped. <laughs> what, what would happen there? You, you found it okay. though, right? <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. My wife uh, let it out so it could run around the house and she let the dogs out and opened the front door for like 10 minutes and then she couldn't find the bunny. So she thought the bunny went outside, which we all did. And the bunny did go outside, but long story short, the bunny went outside, got scared to death and came right back in the house and hid in our house for three days. And, and we didn't even know where it was. Like we don't know where it was hiding. We checked everywhere in the house. There's no way this bunny was in our house, but it was. It never left our house. We put up signs all over the neighborhood. Lost bunny, brown bunny, floppy <laughs> ears, uh, reward $500. I was willing to pay someone $500 to get our bunny back. <laughs> I saw I saw Giovanna thank the neighbors for helping to find the bunny. And then I saw the post, our bunny is home where everything's good. And I thought, I got to ask about the bunny. This is too good. Yeah. You know, so it never left the house. It was there it the whole never, time. It went outside for a second. The way we found out it went outside is our neighbors have a camera wow. and uh, they record everything. So we said, hey, yesterday at this time, did you, uh, was your camera on? Were, you know, were, were you <laughs> It was a full scale investigation. <laughs> and the bunny walked outside, looked around, walked right back in the house. And, uh, and, and just hid in the house. We couldn't find it. We looked everywhere. I mean, I don't know how it, uh, where it was hiding. It had to be hiding somewhere like in the walls. There was a vent. There was a hole in, in our wall in, the walls. In, in one room. And I think it went into the vent and was 
stuck in there for a couple of days. So what, just come hopping out then finally? Just come waltzing out somewhere? How'd you My find wife it? came on one day and the bunny was just staring at her uh, at the front door. <laughs> like, hey, I'm here. What's the bunny's name, Kurt? Uh, Sunny. I call him, I call I call her Cinnabon, but uh, my daughter named her Sunny. Well, Sunny has returned home. So what a successful Easter for the Angles. You know what? It ruined everybody's mood. I mean, this bunny is like the backbone of our family right now. <laughs> I have no idea why. It's a freaking bunny rabbit, but my wife took it so hard. She was crying all day. I mean, she was really, really upset about this. More upset than my daughter, Juliana, who we got the bunny for. Right. N <laughs> near and dear to Giovanna's heart, the bunny, Sonny. Yeah. The bunny, Sonny. I love it. Uh, well, hey, I, you know, we had to hop into that story first. You see what I did there? Okay. I know that was terrible. Hey, the, but uh, you know what? I love it. I love getting a little inside the angle life. And uh, I saw that that was kind of going on. I had to ask what happened with that whole deal. And I, you know, and of course we hear it here first. It was in the house the whole time. It was in the house. Yes. Ah, so there you go. Well, listen, Kurt, let's, uh, let's dig into what we're really here and what the fans are here to hear about. And that is all about RVD. I mean, listen, April 20th isn't far from us. It's oh, RVD's it's favorite day of the year. That's and so we celebrate RVD. That's right. It's like his, it's like national RVD day. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about the whole effing show. And, uh, I'm going to kick off a little bit about the background, how you guys met. And we're going to show some fun clips, including one, you and I just talked about at the end of the show that I had never seen before. And man, it is a, it's a treat. If you're not a YouTube subscriber, this is another reason why you should check it out on YouTube. So you can watch this clip with us. But, uh, Kurt, we'll start with, uh, he actually wrestled on, uh, on the one ECW show that you had attended in Philadelphia that you walked out on after they did that whole crucifixion angle. But, uh, did you remember, did you meet him at that show or, or at, at all? Or, or did yes, you even yes, have an I opportunity? Rob. Okay. I remember meeting Rob, uh, very nice, uh, very friendly, uh, went up and introduced himself to me. And, uh, what I remembered about Rob the most was him and Jerry Lynn had a banger of a match. I mean, th th this match was incredible. And uh, he stuck out to me. Uh, uh, he was above everybody else uh, on that roster. And I, I'm not taking anything away from Taz, but RVD seemed to be the guy that uh, really uh, uh, stirred it up that night and w had the best match of the night. So he stuck out to you. You knew who he was. You got to meet him. And he's always had this reputation, Kurt, for having this laid back attitude, much different from some of the guys, maybe in the WWF locker room at the time, he makes his transition over. So he makes his debut. He's at, you know, in WWF. How did you see him fitting in after he did debut, uh, during the invasion angle? Oh, I, I knew it'd be easy for him to fit in because he was so easy to get along with. He was quiet, you know, he he was laid back. He was Rob Van Dam, just, hey, dude, nice and cool, you know. Um, but uh, that kind of attitude will will, will help you because uh, you, you know the guy is not trying to be political. You know he's not trying to – he's not going to be talking about people behind their backs. Uh, he's not a backstabber. You know who he is. He, sh he shows who he is every day. I mean, he's Rob Van Dam. He, he tells it like it is, and he's just a laid back dude. So I knew he would mess well with the WWE. And not only in wrestling industry, but any industry day to day, you will take a, that kind of guy any day of the week over yeah. someone who acts like they're friendly and then playing games. You said it, none of the political bullshit, just a nice guy laid back and you know where you stood with him. Yeah. So sounds refreshing to me, but I, I did want to ask, did you hang out with him at all? Or was it more of that casual? Hey, when you saw him, hello type of thing, or oh. did you ever get to spend any extra time with him? Okay, back then, you know, this was like early 2000s. Back then, you hung out with the people that were more susceptible to what you do. Um, in other words, smokers that smoke, hang yeah. out with smokers. Right. I didn't smoke, so Rob right. was a smoker. And, um, you know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, a lot of wrestlers – there are a lot that don't smoke, a lot that do smoke. And um, Rob was just one guy that uh, was on the other side of me. And so I really didn't spend a lot of time with him. I was friendly with him. We were friends and we, we got along really well, but I didn't hang out with Rob. No. 
He sounds like a guy that would got, got along great with my buddy Mike Kyoto. All right, I'll tell you that because Kyoto likes uh, he likes his his smoke too. Yes, so. he does. He, oh, yeah, he would travel with Rob every once in a while, I believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm sure that they he has plenty of stories about him. But uh, here's the other thing that Rob had a reputation for, and that was being stiff and laying it in, Kurt. And you brought this up in the past that you're okay with that type of work. I mean that you're you have that similar style. Any memories of him and someone going at it because of Rob being too stiff anything that you can recall you know what rob wasn't stiff all the time you know he laid in every once in a while he got you pretty good you know one match and then three matches would go by and he might get you with another one he wasn't known to be stiff all the time he i was actually more stiff than he was but uh i never heard any stories where guys got pissed off at him and let me just tell you this if they get, did get pissed off at him he's a badass okay he can fight okay this kid is a tough son of a bitch so I think a lot of guys knew that and, uh, they weren't going to give him any trouble, <laughs> not going to give him any shit for it. There you go. Yeah. Well, let's get into you and Rob because your first match together is in Chicago on Raw's war, August 13th, 2001. All right. 22 years ago. It's a hardcore title match because this is the era of the 24 seven rule. Jeff Hardy ends up winning the title, but, uh, man, what were your first impressions? You finally get your hands on Rob Van Dam in the ring. You know what? He was different. Um, he was a big dude. I mean, he weighed 250. His butt and legs were huge, gigantic. He was deceivingly big. and um, But the way he moved and the high-flying stuff he was doing and how flexible he was, it just really blew my mind. And uh, I, I I clung to him right away. I, I We had great chemistry from the beginning, and uh, I really enjoyed working with him. Well, buddy, we have it in true Kurt Angle show fact, uh, fashion. We have four clips this week. This is the first one. It's only a three-minute match, but it is a super good match, super fast-paced, and so we're going to watch it here together. Clip one, uh, clip one of this week. Here we go. We are live in Chicago, sold out here on Raw. Rob Van Dam and Kurt Angle. Championship matchup. Here we go, Rob Van Dam and Kurt Angle. Still to come, the Rock and Y2J. Here we go, the cover and a near fall. Against Booker T and Rhino. Can you imagine if Kurt Angle gets taken out here? How Mr. McMahon is going to be scrambling on Sunday at SummerSlam. Well, right now, Kurt Angle's got one thing in his mind, that is to destroy Rob Van Dam. Oh, my Angle catapulted over the railing to the exposed concrete floor and I'm sure that Austin and his bride Mrs. Rattlesnake must be enjoying the, the festivities here with RVD having the advantage and a shot right to the head. And trust me, RVD likes to take people out and wow, look at this, RVD driving Kurt Angle down to the floor. And there's a cover, RVD looking for the three, they got a near fall. I have all the respect in the world for Kurt Angle, but quite frankly, you have to question his wisdom for accepting the challenge of this match. Just six days before, Kurt Angle has the opportunity to bring the WWF title back to the World Wrestling Federation this Sunday at SummerSlam on pay-per-view against Stone Cold Steve Austin. My God, and Steve Austin, has, he has all the troops wrapped up. Oh, and then, drop kick, and this face just bounced right off that steel chair, and there's a cut. Here we go, the leg is hooked, and Van Dam able to get his shoulder up. No way is RDD going down, not after the motivation delivered to him by Stone Cold Steve Austin, your WWF champion. And RBD, as unorthodox as he can be, gets very, very effective. Perhaps the most popular member of the Alliance, but look at this shot. The drop hit, boom, a score into the steel. RBD with the chair. BD using that chair like a, a, a maestro. And it's legal in this hardcore matchup. There is a cup. And Elias referee Charles Robinson found a two count there. And that's the man, Stone Cold, who will meet Kurt Angle in six days on pay per view. If Kurt Angle survives this match, Rob Van Dam is the opponent to take Kurt Angle out. Van Dam, the martial arts shot right to the temple of Kurt Angle. Angle teetering on that top turnbuckle. 
tackle now in this hardcore matchup. And, oh! Van Dam Dipsy, when he should have doodled, and almost got his head taken off. And Kurt Angle, you can feel, you can feel the momentum of Angle, and there's the angle. There it is. It's going to be over here. Now, wait a second. What the hell? There's Raven and, and Tommy Dreamer and Mike Awesome. I know there's no disqualification, but this is not right. Dude, all hell broke loose, but that was hell of an entertaining three minutes. <laughs> a lot of action, man, for three minutes. <laughs> you know, it, and we saw the move where he was doing the rolling thunder, and then you come off the top rope with that awesome clothesline. I, that, I popped for that. That was that was cool. Yeah. That was Rob's idea, actually. So uh, he, he was really good at putting stuff together. Really good. And that's what I was going to say about him, because now here is another unique innovative guy that you get to work with. We've talked about you and Rey Mysterio. Obviously, your match is with Undertaker, who brings a different style. Uh, you've worked with HBK, but yet here is just another uh, a performer who brings a completely different style, very innovative. But again, um, you're able to just pick right up with it and work with them seamlessly. And uh, and we're as we're able to see in that three-minute clip, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I, I give Rob a lot of credit. He he's such an incredible athlete, and when he goes in that ring, man, he goes full tilt. He he does. There's no no doubt about it. Two weeks later, Kurt, in the main event on Raw, you team with Chris Jericho, your old buddy, still doing it in AEW to defeat Rob and Taz during the height of the invasion. You and Jericho working with two former ECW guys here in the main event of Raw. This is a big deal for Rob and Taz, especially when you think about where they came from, man. They were the heart and soul of ECW. Uh, what were they like to work with? Oh, they were very professional. Um, they, they agreed to everything that we wanted to do. Uh, they added in their own little, you know, flavor, but, um, they were cool. I mean, uh, you know, I, I never heard anything bad about them in ECW and, uh, I'd never heard anything bad about Taz or RVD and WWE. Those guys weren't political by any means. They were so easy to work with. Well, listen, I mean, you know, here you are, you're working with Rob and, uh, you mentioned that he helped kind of figure out that rolling thunder spot into the clothesline. Was he different putting matches together with than other guys, or was it just the easy conversation between you two? You're laughing your ass off. <laughs> well, this is what Rob did. Um, you would go to Rob and say, Hey Rob, we have a match tonight. He'd say, okay, give me five minutes. <laughs> if he would. <laughs> He would go outside and smoke for five minutes, get high as a kite, and come back in, and he was full of ideas. It's like beforehand, he had nothing to give, but when he went out there and smoked outside, he came back, and he had like a million ideas. It was just incredible. Cool. So Rob was better high than he was, you know, so no, Right, than he was, yeah, right, level-headed. Would you... And I, and I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How much... I'll ask it a different way. How much would have you enjoyed working a long program with Rob? Oh, I would have loved it. You know, he's very underrated from a promo standpoint. I mean, he actually, uh, he's very articulate. Uh, he does it his own way. And he, the whole, hey, dude, I don't care, really care, dude. Uh, but um, he's he's actually surprisingly good at that. So I, I would have loved to have a program with him, a long program. That would have been one of my favorite programs, I think. 
Yeah, no, I think it would have been hell of an entertaining program to see you two have something longer than what you guys were able to. But Kurt, you did win the hardcore title from RVD on September 10th, 2001, uh, 2001 at an episode of Raw in San Antonio. And then you lost it back to RVD about a minute later when Austin threw you off the stage. That's just how it, it worked back in those days. And we're going to take a look at it as our second clip of the week. This is the hardcore championship match. It's Kurt Angle versus Rob Van Dam. I don't like this maniacal side of Kurt Angle. But tonight is for the hardcore title. And RVD and Angle and for the fight of their lives here. Anything goes, there can be no count outs. You can depend on that, that steel staging as easily as in the ring. Van Dam kicking Angle almost on a rabbit punch. A jab to the temple. Right? Using his feet. Angle staggering. He's on Green Street here. And another shot to the head. Angle took this to cuss. And now Van Dam with a, with a head scissors. That could be a tempo. Kurt, before I jump out of this clip altogether, I'm muting it and I'm going to go back and let's watch this dude, because talk to me about this bump. Here comes Austin running out. And I mean, you're running full throttle. All right, here we go. I'm going to hit play. Watch how you, I mean, to be able to, to, to take this bump and land correctly. Here we go. Watch it. Here you are. Here he comes. Dumps you like trash. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, supposed to happen. I, well, oh yeah, t t it wasn't. No, not like that. I mean, I was falling off balance. I was barely able yes. to, to get to the to the edge and uh, take my bump over the. You know, it was about eight foot down uh, the, the 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 length of, of the bump. Yeah, from the and ramp I, to the floor. Thing is, I wanted to make sure I could uh, flip over onto my back before I landed, and I was going head first, man. Thank God I got my body over and I landed on my back. I mean, there, there was a padding down there. It was like eight inch padding, and they had cords there. But if I would land on my head, I would have broke my neck. Uh, yeah, and that's yeah, another broken neck, and that's uh, just <laughs> what we need for Kurt Angle. But man, it, it's a little scary. You see, it's just another example of how quickly the this stuff happens. And, and if you're not on your game, you're done. Out of nowhere, it can happen just like that. You're absolutely right. Hmm. Dangerous. All right, later on Raw in Nashville, I want to read this from The Torch. Ma the main event saw Jericho and Angle over Austin and Van Dam in 8 minutes, 21 seconds. Good action and real good heat. 
They did one spot where Van Dam kicked Austin for the long-term tease, ref bump. Everyone seemed to get their finishers on with no ref. Ankle lock on Austin. Van Dam then saved. Jericho went, uh, went with walls on Van Dam. Austin saved. Austin hit Jericho with the ring bell. He went to hit Angle, but Earl Hebner grabbed the bell from him. Angle got near falls with a schoolboy and a German suplex on Austin before finally hitting the Angle slam after a blocked stunner for the pin. Man, it sounds like that you and Rob Van Dam are really fine in your chemistry here at this point, dude. Yeah, yeah. The more we worked together, the better it was. And uh, at this point in time, I don't know if we could have worked together any better. We were primed, and I would have wished that we had a long-term program, definitely, at this point in time. Well, uh, it's RVD versus you again. It's October 4th, 2001, SmackDown, Mobile, Alabama. Uh, Kurt, you're the WWF champion here, and RVD pinned you in a non-title match following interference from Shane O'Mac. Mr. Torn Quad himself still can't believe that happened at WrestleMania. Oh, man. Oh. The, that that family in the Torn Quads, Vince, <laughs> Triple H, Shane. I mean, come on. But uh, RVD is a little stiff with one of his kicks early on in the match, and you're bleeding badly from the mouth for most of this match as a result. Do you remember? Did you give Rob any shit for this, or did you know, <laughs> hey, that's just what happens when you're wrestling? You know what? It, it's what happens. I it, Rob, I know he never meant it, uh, but it was one of those kicks you can't gauge. You're jumping off the top of the rope, and you're doing this karate kick in the air. And there's no way to gauge whether you, you know, whether you're going to stiff the person or completely miss the person. And I, I'd rather Rob stiff me than miss me. And I think that's why he laid in a little bit more, just so he wouldn't miss me with the kick. Well, you're the baby face here. I know you flip flop throughout your career quite a bit, but you're the baby face. This is WW, you know, E wants everyone cheering for Kurt Angle at this point, yes. but the crowd says, screw you. They're reacting to Rob in the same way yes. as a performer for you. Is that frustrating at all? No, no, it's actually, it's not bad. Have a double baby face match is actually good. Uh, it's not as good as a baby versus heel match, but it's a lot better than a heel versus heel match. It's true. You have that. The Fans don't give a shit about either guy. <laughs> you know, they don't want to cheer for either one. So I don't mind doing baby versus baby. It's, ha it's happened before and it'll happen again. So no big deal there for you there. Uh, two weeks later, Kurt, on SmackDown in Montreal, it's you versus RVD again. This is the go-home show for No Mercy 2001, where it's a triple threat match for the WWF title, which is now held by Stone Cold. RVD once again busts you open the hard way in this match, Kurt. No wonder you didn't have a long program with this guy. But now your nose is bleeding. And at the match ends, it ends in a no contest because Stone Cold interferes. But the show ends with RVD. RVD hitting the frog splash on his alliance leader, Stone Cold Steve Austin, to add some last bit of intrigue to their pay-per-view match. Did you ever just go over to Rob and say, hey, bud, hey, El Sniffo, uh, take care of me a little bit more, pal? You know what? He apologized that time. He said, man, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know I didn't mean it. I said, Rob, don't worry about it. It's cool. Uh, you know what? Paul, as much as he stiff people, I stiff people twice as much. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm no one to talk about it. I, I was a stiffy too. <laughs> you are <laughs> such a stiffy. And uh, I never thought I'd use that line on the show. But you're right. You got you did beat the shit out of people. So it's only fair that somebody finally takes a couple shots and makes you yeah, bleed, they, they got on me for once. Well, Rob, you're my new hero. Okay. I'm just going to say it here live on the show. But you, you talk about it. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sensing this theme as we talk about him. He was just so easy to work with. Seems like he was receptive to feedback, critique, whatever, especially if he was high, he was just awesome guy to work with. <laughs> he was even better to work with when he was high. Uh, you know what? I, honestly, I don't know if I ever met Rob or seen Rob if he wasn't high. <laughs> <laughs> you but might not want to. He had to put the matches together. Even if he was high, he had to get higher. So he, so, so they come back. He would get high, put the match together, then get higher and do the match. <laughs> yes, that is Rob Van Dam. <laughs> there it is. We we we've that's his essence. That's how he makes the magic happen. Well, listen, uh, putting a match together but with I, Rob. Paul, I, I got to tell you this. Sure, I've smoked before. Okay, I'm not gonna. Yeah, well, good for you. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> hey. There is no fucking way I could work if I smoked. There's just no way. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I would love to be able to do that, but I can't. 
Kurt, how do you act after you get high or when you've gotten high? I mean, I know that's not your world now, but like, what does it make you do? What, what, what do you just stumble around? Are you just eating Twinkies? Like what, what is a high Kurt sleep. angle? I want to eat and go to sleep. Eat and that's go it. to sleep. Yeah. What's your go-to munch? What, what was your go-to munchie when you were high? We're here. Let's talk about it. It's close to 420. We might as well. We're going off script. Oh gosh. I, I would eat any desserts, man. I have pies. Desserts. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, uh, some of the, um, little Debbie's little Debbie's. Yeah. Twinkies. Yeah. Twinkies. All that stuff, man. Ho-hos. Yeah. Ho-hos. Yes. Oh yeah. Christmas tree cakes. Whatever. <laughs> Brownies. Give me all the chocolate chip cookies. Come on now. I ate uh, all, of it, yes. all of it. All right. So he's sweet tooth for Kurt Angle. <sighs> well, listen, putting a match together Just with, so you know, I, how much of a sweet tooth I have. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. This is awesome. I, I love it. I don't care. Off on this. We're going in another direction. Who cares? Um, I actually put 12 Splenda in my coffee. That's, that's how much every day I like sweets. Yes. 12 Splenda. So we know how strict you are. We know you, 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 you promote chick the hell out of chicken snacks at the end of every episode. I mean, that's just always the icing on our cake as we wrap up these shows. What if, if you have a splurge day, what's your go-to sweet? Or is there a place you like to go and be like, that's the dessert I want. Oh, Buca de Beppo. Okay. And what that's are you eating there? Place. I eat all the Italian food, lasagna, spaghetti, meatballs. That is good stuff. And then they bring out this Italian cake. That's phenomenal. And, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what it's called, but I know how it tastes. Are you a chocolate lover guy? Like, do you like chocolate? I love chocolate. I, I like both chocolate and vanilla. I like them actually mixed. Oh, okay. That's, that's my cup of tea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Little little cocoa, little vanilla. No, I don't do this often. This is rarely, <laughs> but when I go off, I eat like twelve thousand calories. Like it's ridiculous. twelve thousand at one sitting. I don't get full. My my body, my stomach, I, it's never been entirely full. I, I am hungry all the time, and that's why I have to gauge my diet all the time. I have to watch what I eat because I, I have OCD, and I'll, I'll go crazy. I mean, I could eat, like, forever. I could probably eat till I died. Like, So you're like a dog. You're like a, a dog who would just – they just don't uh, it's stop. It's pretty bad, dude. Yeah. I, I, I got terrible OCD, especially <laughs> with food. Now, how were you with all the Easter candy around the house? Oh, God, I, I smashed that on Sunday. <laughs> Are you, Reese's, day. are you a Reese's peanut like, butter cup guy? I stole all their candy and ate all of it. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Dad, get out of here. We lost our bunny. Plus, you ate our chocolate. You asshole. <laughs> You know what? I had to go to the store and get them more candy because they were crying. You are nuts, man. I love it. Oh, this is so good. Hey, the, again, munchies. This is a perfect topic for the Rob Van Dam show. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get back to it. So everybody right now that's listening to the show is like hungry. Thanks to us, by the way, they're like, oh, dairy queen. They're getting blizzards, you know, anything. Uh, all right. So putting them at people. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Have one on us. I'm trying to watch that shit, but man, it Might sounds want to good. Smoke first. <laughs> yeah. Have a little smokes, light it up. Uh, putting a match together with Rob and Steve RVD and Steve Austin for a pay-per-view world title match. Was that complicated or was high Rob and drunk stone cold and level-headed Kurt? Was that a fun way to put a match together? <laughs> you know what? It was a bit of a challenge because, you know, Steve had this old school kind of wrestling uh, style. You know, he, he was a heavyweight wrestler. Rob Van Dam had this high flying flexibility style of wrestling. Yeah. It was different. And we really had to like, bring all three of us together and make sure it meshed really well. But uh, Rob Van Dam, he was really crucial in helping to put match together. He came up with a lot of great ideas and I, after he got high, of course, and uh, you know, he, he was really good at this stuff, man. He, he got really creative. Once he smoked, man, this guy, it, the, the, you know, it was endless. He, he could do whatever he wanted to do. It's like, it's like he could accomplish the world when he's high. Well, now that you put him over so much as like just the, the star, the high star of the world, and we got Stone Cold, who do you think they said was the star of this match? I'm about to read. Oh, I'd say RVD. All right. I'm going to read the results. No Mercy 2001 from St. Louis. Steve Austin retained the WWF title in a three-way over Kurt Angle and Rob Van Dam by pinning Van Dam in 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Kurt Angle, who was supposed to be the odd man out, ended up being the star of the match. <laughs> 
He ended up throwing four suplexes in a row, two on each guy. They did a few spots where they'd throw Angle out of the ring and tease Austin versus Van Dam. Lots of spots where they do their finishers, and the third guy would break it up. Austin tried to try to pile driver on the table on Kurt, who flipped out of it. And Austin landed hard on the table, which didn't break, by the way. Vince came out. Van Dam did a spin kick on Austin. Angle did a belly-to-belly superplex on Van Dam. Austin did a stunner to Angle. I mean, this is just move after move. Angle then hit five German suplexes and an Olympic slam on Austin. You're beating the shit out of him. Shane makes the save, knocking Angle out of the ring. Vince attacks Shane, and they rolled all over the announcer's table. This sounds like a classic... Uh, a classic uh, attitude era three way with the, with <laughs> the was, McMahons involved. Was, Finish was actually flat after an awesome match because the attention was with the McMahons at the finish and not on the finish itself. After the pay per view ended, McMahon got in the ring and raised Kurt Angle's hand to a huge pop, and then went to raise Van Dam's hand, but Van Dam blew him off. So talk about this match though. Are you happy with it, Kurt? Oh, I was extremely happy with it. I was a little upset that uh, the finish was really semi-okay. Um, you know, it, it had a lot to do with the McMahons being out there, and uh, the attention was drawn toward them, and the finish kind of happened, you know, under the rug. You know, it was one of those things where that became second to the McMahons, and we probably should have had the McMahons get out of there before we had the finish. We probably should have had them come down, do whatever they had to do, and then leave. And then we would end up doing the finish, but it didn't happen that way. So Kurt, it really feels like Rob is right on the cusp of, you know, WWF, WWE, whatever. We all know it's the same company. I'm going to say WWE, but they're on the cusp of making him a, a big time star at this point. But then it feels like it just stops. Why do you, why do you think that happened? You don't know. Well, I see you just laughing. Go ahead. Tell us. <laughs> no, no, this, this is my, my theory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is your show, um, damn it. I have seen, <laughs> that's right, it's my <laughs> show. Remember that, Paul. Uh, <laughs> I've seen so many wrestlers come from other companies, WCW, ECW. They come into the WWE. And when they get there, they're in the main event, the same position they were in their prior company. They're in the main event, wrestling in the main event, making a lot of money for the company. And then what WWE does after a, a while, six to 12 months, they pull them down to the opening card. And they rebuild those athletes into WWE superstars. Okay, it happened to Benoit. It happened to Eddie Guerrero. Happened to Chris Jericho. I believe it even happened with NWO. Um, so this with um, you know with uh, Rob, he the, he they brought him in larger than life because it, he was a main event in ECW. But then they pulled him back down to opening card and, and had him rebuild himself up. And it, he and you, usually it takes like a year or two to build yourself back up. But with Rob, it took a little bit longer. And we've talked about this before. Do you like that philosophy? Or do you think, hey, bring a guy in if he's hot. Let him ride. Ride him while he's hot. I say let him ride. Yeah. But, but, you know, I understand. I mean, I, I understand the company wants to make these athletes their athletes. And w they probably, and that, but that was their mindset back then. They, they would adopt, I feel like Triple H regime now, it's different and creative, right? Cody, Cody's riding high. He's a star. Yeah, yeah he came back and he's yeah. doing really well. You're absolutely yeah. right. But that was the philosophy back then. Yeah, I, I, it was my theory. I, I didn't know if anybody agreed, but you know, that's Who cares? what I saw. It's your that's show. That's right. That's right. As we said. Well, listen, you two would have a few more matches in early 2002 before the brand split, but you two don't run into each other again until ECW in 2006. That's four years later. How disappointed were you didn't get to work with Rob Moore during that time frame? Four years, bud. You know what? I remember Rob, he actually started a tag team with Booker T and they had a really good run. And I think that pulled him out of the singles uh, position uh, for quite some time. And uh, like I said before, they were, they, they tore him down to build him back up again. And unfortunately it took him four years, way too long. I mean, yeah. he ended up being ECW and WWE champion in 2006. He got there in 2001. Yeah. So it took him like five years to get the title. Well, buddy, as you can imagine, you and Rob were the biggest uh, you stars on ECW. Is there a moment in time where you two sit down and discuss where the brand should go and what you guys wanted to accomplish together as part of ECW? You know what? We didn't sit down and discuss that, and I believe it's because 
you know, Vince McMahon had a vision on what he wanted to do. The creative had a vision. And I don't think they really cared to hear what we had to say. And uh, we were just following what they wanted us to do. Did you feel like, hey, we are now, obviously, they wanted to have you kind of be that hardcore shit kicker, tough guy, ECW, face of ECW. But did you feel like, hey, Rob's here, the two of us can kind of carry the mantle together? Because you were a big believer in his talent, it sounds like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was happy to share the top spot with Rob. I mean, we were definitely the two biggest stars in ECW at that particular time. And uh, we shared that. And uh, I was happy doing that because, you know, the, the crazy thing is uh, how long it took Rob to be champion. Yeah. I just can't believe that it took him four to five years. It would have been nice to have a big program with him here at ECW. Yeah, yeah. That's his cup of tea. That's his, you know, that's where he came from. The wrestling machine and RVD. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. You know what? It would have happened, but I left the company. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. long after this? Timing, timing was uh, everything with that. But, uh, Kurt, on the second TV show uh, here on June 20th, 2006, you and RVD defeated Edge and Randy Orton in Albany, New York. And uh, it says, uh, Rob Van Dam and Kurt Angle representing ECW, teamed to be Edge and Randy Orton, who represented Raw. RVD hit a five-star frog splash on Edge for the pinfall after 15 minutes of back-and-forth action in a WWE heavyweight-style match. Lita became involved throughout the match since it's, it was an ECW rules match where outside interference is legal. However, Angle took, took her out of the picture with the Angle Slam. All right, there you go. So uh, how much uh, had Rob's style changed here, Kurt, since working with him in 02? Or did it not change at all from in your estimation? It never changed. You know why? Because he always took care of himself. He always you know, worked on flexibility, weight trained. Uh, he did cardio. He was always in shape, uh, never out of shape. Um, he was always healthy. He never got injured because of his flexibility. And I believe that really helped him. Were you surprised at the gigantic reactions that Rob was getting from the crowd here as he's, uh, you know, <laughs> ECW, WWE champion? I mean, he was over, bro. He was over. And you know what? He reminded me a lot of when I uh, had Taz's debut in Madison Square Garden. Taz got a huge pop in Madison Square Garden. And that's the kind of pops that Rob, Rob Van Dam was getting in front of these ECW crowds. Hey guys, Eric Bischoff here, and just want to call a quick time out. I want to tell your listeners about what I've been telling everybody at over at 83 Weeks for quite a while now, about all the cool things that are happening over at adfreeshows.com. He created the soundtrack for generations of WWE fans with some of the most iconic themes in history. Legendary composer Jim Johnston sits down with Conrad to take us behind the themes that we all grew up on, including Randy Orton's Voices. Got your rules and your religion All designed to keep you safe But when rules start getting broken You start questioning I wanted it to be a little bit creepy. Right. That's what it felt like to me. It was uh, dark, mysterious, creepy. That's just a small taste of what we've got waiting for you with four levels to choose from. See for yourself why ad-free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com. Kurt, a week later in Roanoke, you challenge RVD for the ECW title. And uh, I'm going to read the kind of the, the notes here that we have for that. WWE and ECW champion Rob Van Dam beat Kurt Angle in the main event of ECW's third show on Sci-Fi. The first half was slow, but the second half really picked up, and it turned into a very good television match by the end. RVD racked up an impressive string of matches after defeating Edge on pay-per-view, keeping the belt against Cena on Raw, and beating Angle clean on ECW TV. WWE is pushing him like a superstar, and he's answering the challenge. 
Despite wrestling a top opponent for the third consecutive night, RVD didn't show signs of fatigue. Instead, he delivered yet another strong performance, and both men finished the show on a high note with an impressive series of counters, reversals, and well-executed athleticism. With Edge and Lita sitting ringside for the match, Angle could have joined RVD, Edge, and John Cena in the WWE title match at the July 15th Saturday night's main event show on NBC if he won the match. However, RVD was able to escape the ankle lock on several occasions before hitting the five-star frog splash for the clean win over Angle. Afterwards, RVD turned his back on Edge and Lita, who appeared to leave the ringside area. However, Edge ran into the ring from out of nowhere and speared RVD. He raised his arms in celebration and stood over RVD's fallen body to close the show. Kurt, in our third clip of the week, I have the ending of this, and so we can check it out uh, together. Here we go. Shoulder up off the candle. Oh, oh, there we go, there we go, and I'm angle. I go for that ankle lock. That's it. He's got it on now. Can you uh -oh. Nice counter. Very impressive by the champion. Great flexibility by Rob Van Dam to roll through. Oh, 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 oh man. Man, was that on the money. <laughs> Ed, you might be feeling that. <laughs> Good thing Kurt's got that mouthpiece in. His teeth might be old. Cover. Wait a minute. Rob Van Dam on top now. Two in. Angles just hit the right shoulder. Look, look, look at this kick. Watch this pressing kick. Oh, right to the side of the face. Let me tell you something, folks. You don't have a clue to get kind of impact that just. Oh, watch out. Rob Van Dam up top. This is the kind of action you only see on ECW. Watch out! Oh my god! Oh, Rob Van Dam got caught! Rob Van Dam got caught in the ankle lock! Rob's in trouble. Kurt Angle had Rob Van Dam very, very well scouted. The ECW World Heavyweight Champion makes it to the bottom rope. Well, Kurt not releasing that hold. Nope. Gotta release it. Oh, there and now Kurt Angle is dragging Rob Van Dam back to the center of the ring. Kurt, can we go so Uh oh, oh. Rob Van Dam with that last minute lunge, his leverage pulling Kurt Angle outside of the ring. Yeah, but what kind of damage was done to the ankle of Rob, Rob Van Dam, which could affect Rob Van Dam's offense with his kicks and his martial arts. Can you believe Kurt Angle countering a leaping sidekick from the top turnbuckle, grabbing the ankle in midair, going for the ankle lock? I actually can believe it, because I've been in the ring with Angle. He's amazing. Oh, as is Van Dam. Van Dam lands across the throat of Kurt Angle. This could be all cover of the leg, two in. Oh, that was close. Rob Van Dam scores a two count from that slingshot. All inside cradle, small package. Kurt Angle ties it, Robin. Edge. Nice cradle by Angle. Oh, what a match we got here, right here, baby. Oh, man. Rob to hold Angle eats the second turnbuckle. Ooh. And Rob Van Dam's boot. Oh, my God. Oh, watch out, Kurt. You're in trouble. Oh, maybe not. Even Rolling Thunder was scouted by Kurt Angle. Angle again going right back to the ankle of the oh, ECW Heavyweight Champion. Oh, those kicks, Joe. Right to the side of the head and that ear. Right behind the ear of Kurt Angle. Edge and Lita looking on. They've got two of the best seats in the house. And how about Kurt Angle? That's the mark of a great apple. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Rob Van Dam hits the flat leg and moves on. Van Dam on top. The champ's on top. Three. Oh, man, that was close. Whew. Kurt Angle, the mark of a great amateur athlete and amateur wrestler, has been watching hours and hours of tapes and DVDs of Rob Van Dam. He's had all of Rob Van Dam's kicks hey, scouted listen, so well. You don't get much better than a gold medalist as far as scouting, right? <clears throat> Ooh, nice elbow by Van, Van Dam, another one. Angle looking to suplex Rob Van Dam out of his boots. Ooh, nice counter. Oh, that wasn't counted. That Kurt Angle thought he countered the Enzigiri. Didn't see that second. Well, basically, it was almost like a, a single-legged mule kick coming at you. And Van Dam now, even on a comes. bad ankle, going up top. Here it comes. Uh oh, wait a minute. Wait Angle a minute. just pops right up. Oh! Angle pops his hips and throws Rob Van Dam. Angle on top. He's got him. Oh my God. Man, what a match. Oh yeah. Only on ECW. What an outstanding, extreme wrestling match we've got. And now there the Olympic go. gold medalist meets business. Here we go. Watch out, Rob. Angle slam coming up. Uh-oh, what the hell's this? Van Dam shifting his weight oh. in midair and spikes the Olympic gold medalist to the canvas. The question is, can Rob Van Dam, the ECW World Heavyweight Champion, now capitalize? Well, right in that surgically repaired neck, that DDT, and here we go. RVD up on. top. Yeah. Five-star frog splash. What an elevation, what impact. Right. Yeah. 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 Awesome.
awesome. I think even Edge might be impressed. Edge might be worried. He's going to deal with not only Rob Van Dam, but John Cena in a triple well, threat match at well, Saturday Night's main event. Edge, Edge is leaving. RVD looking at him, and Edge is just taking a powder. He's just leaving. Good. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. Good. Don't let the door hit you with a good ball splinter. What a victory what a for Rob Van Dam. Yeah, World Heavyweight Champion Carter, Robin. What the hell? Oh, wait a minute. What the hell? Another opportunistic spear by the rated R superstar. There we go. As I just described, what'd you think? Oh, I was, thought it was a great match. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. You know what move I always loved and enjoyed salt there? The old split legged moonsault. Did you ever attempt <laughs> that one, Kurt, in practice or anything? Try oh, it yourself. Man, I, I would blow out my hamstrings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just his flexibility and the stuff he could do just on the fly. Amazing, uh, isn't it? Incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you, you guys, you, you get to the back, do you talk to Paul Heyman and Vince McMahon and say, Hey, this is what we can do. If you gave us a program, I mean, was there any of that conversation that you can recall? No, no, because at this point in time, I wasn't really speaking up. Uh -huh. I was really happy with myself and the company. And at this point in time, I really wanted to get out of the company. And that, that was my, that was my objective <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, true. So, Kurt, listen, you're on a sabbatical when everything goes down with Rob Van Dam. When did you end up hearing about it? Oh, I heard about it the next day. I mean, it was, it was huge news. Um, he got picked, pulled over by a car, uh, police, and um, they found some drugs in his car, I think Vicodin and some marijuana. And um, he ended up getting stripped of the title, I believe WWE and ECW titles, and uh, he got suspended. Uh, it was pretty sad. I... You know, think about it. Viking is actually legal, uh, but I'm, they might not have a prescription. For right. It. And then weed is legal today. You know, yeah, exactly. It wasn't back then. So it kind of sucked that Rob got that. But, um, and, and, you know, back then people looked at you like, how could you do that? How could you mess up your career? And, and today it'd be like, oh, he smokes weed. So what? You know, he takes Viking and so what? You know, uh, uh, it just was different back then. Yeah, and uh, buddy, if you hadn't been taking time off, do you think ECW title would have ended up on you instead of someone like maybe the Big Show? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. They they were really trying to push me in ECW. They wanted to make me the, the name in the face, and uh, I I had some issues that I had to get uh, uh, taken care of, and that's why I took a break for a while. And uh, it was more personal than anything. And uh, I knew I know that they wanted to put the ECW title on me eventually. Did you talk to Rob at all during this, or did you guys not have a real, I mean, I, I can't imagine that you would be like, Hey, Rob, talk to me. How are you feeling? <laughs> uh, that's just not how you guys are in general as performers, right? No, no. And, and not a lot of people would ask him that. I mean, yeah. if anybody would be like his closest friend, like Sabu, who actually was with him. Yeah. But you know, if Sabu wasn't with him, he would, you know, Sabu would be, be able to talk to Rob and say, Hey, sure. what happened? You know, uh, I just wasn't, I uh, didn't know where I wasn't good enough friends with Rob to ask him that person. Sure. Makes sense. So listen, dude, you're out of the company not much longer after that. And you wouldn't run into RVD again until TNA. That's right. You guys come together. How big of a deal was it for Rob to come into TNA? Oh, it was huge. I think it was as big as when I came in. Uh, you know, knowing Rob was coming in, a former WWE and ECW champion, a huge star in the business. Uh, I was pretty excited about that. You know, I, I, it wasn't that I was carrying the company on my back because we had great wrestlers, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Sting, Jeff Jarrett, all those people. But um, I felt like, uh, it, you know, the company was mine to, uh, you know, to, uh, to Push, shine, right. know, to, to, to make, make it bigger than it was. And having Rob there really helped me out a bit. Uh, in 2011, you work again with Rob. It's a three-way deal on impact with Ken Anderson involved. I can imagine you were probably ready to, Hey, I want to work a program with Rob again. You guys had such great matches in WWE. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Unfortunately we, we never had any program uh, yeah. never happened, never occurred. And, uh, he's one of the guys that I would love to have a program with. I mean, I, I'd actually love to wrestle Rob, have a program with Rob as much as I did with Bret Hart. Wow, that's a big statement right there. That's going all over the news sites. 
<laughs> as much as he wanted Bret Hart, he wanted a long program with Rob Van Dam. You heard it here first on Kurt Angle's show. Uh, but here's one thing I did want to ask you about because rumor and innuendo, I guess, back then was uh, that he was just there for the paycheck, Kurt. Did you see that as kind of his attitude? Did you ever get no. that feeling with him? That's Rob. You know, hey, dude, I'm here. I'm hanging out. I'm cool. He just wasn't vocal. He wasn't trying to be a leader. He, he wanted to go there and do his thing and uh, perform. It's not like he didn't care about the company. He just, that was Rob. That's the way he was. And, uh, you know, if, he, if you're going to care about a company, if you're Rob Van Dam, as long as you give everything you have in that ring, every single night you go out there, that's all you need from Rob because he's not going to give you anything more. He's not going to tell people, hey, my passion is to make TNA the greatest company in the world. Rob is Rob is Rob Van Dam. And what he's going to do is he's going to do it his way, his own thing, and his style. At a high level, right? When he performs. At a very high level, all the time. Yeah. What about, let's talk about TNA and their side of things. Do you think they gave him the right push or the ability to draw money for the company from their side of things? They, they could they could have given him a better push. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if they thought that he didn't care because he had that I don't care attitude. Uh, they might not have known Rob as well as I did, but um, Rob deserved a, a, a better push than he got. So in your estimation, Rob carried himself the same way he carried himself in WWE, carried himself the same way in TNA. No, no difference. No He's the same both ways. Yeah. There you go. Well, listen, you did get a one-on-one -on -one match with him on impact May of 2011. It's May 26 on impact 2011. Uh, the torch says angle pinned RVD in a good match. RVD got a bloody lip, probably from an elbow. Uh Oh, here goes Kurt returning the favor, giving bloody lips. I love it. See, it all comes full circle here. Full circle. That's right, Bob. They did all their specialties. RVD got out of an Olympic slam and turned it into a DDT. He went to the top, but angle gave him the belly to belly, uh, superplex and followed with the ankle lock. RVD escaped the ankle lock, hit a kick and went to the top. He missed the frog splash and angle used an Olympic slam for the pin. It just felt so rushed after all the buildup for it, uh, through new, nearly two hours. But, uh, Kurt, this is a common theme in TNA, isn't it? Everything was just rushed. Was this a pay-per-view main event that they were just putting on TV? I mean, it feels like they might be giving it away a little bit here. Yeah, they, they were giving it away, but I think they were worried, more worried about the ratings. Yes. The big match Good point. The ratings. So they didn't want to save it for a pay-per-view. I didn't think the match was rushed. I thought the match was pretty solid. I remember my match with Rob Van Dam, and and I'm gonna disagree with the, the critique. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there you go, man. In your estimation, because you worked with him, you worked with him in WWE. He is a Hall of Famer, right? He's a WWE Hall of Famer, and in your estimation, he definitely deserves that. Am I correct in saying that? Oh yeah, definitely. Rob Van Dam, uh, he changed the way people thought about wrestling. He had a different style than everybody else. He was different. He was Rob Van Dam and he was really special. Buddy, before we get to this, uh, to the, some of the fan questions, as we said, uh, there is a hilarious funny or die skit with RVD training you for the 2012 Olympics guys. I had not seen this before again, jump on YouTube. It's can't miss. We're going to check it out together. It's funny or die Olympic trials. Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam, and Brooke Tessmacher ends up making a little spot in the end here, too, for all those who uh, remember her. God, I do. All <laughs> right, let's, let's take a look. This is a good one. <clears throat> for 2012, I dreamed again of making the Olympic team in freestyle wrestling. Unfortunately, an injury got my way. But guess how much that affected my will to go for the gold again? Yeah, that's about how much. Question? No f***ing questions. Read my lips. I will be back at the 2012 Olympics. Kurt, 2012 Olympics? What did you just do? I got overexcited when I saw this suit. I had to buy it. Yeah, yeah. Where did you get that thing? This? Yeah, where'd you get it? Kurt, I'm, I'm, I made it. I wish you would have mentioned this earlier, you know, but we got to deal with this. Boom. I got his back. Fencing. Badminton. Ping pong. Race walking. Beach volleyball. A new event. That's brilliant. Which one do I do? 
You do them all, Kurt. You do them all. Oh, so good, Kurt. What did you think? When you're so watching? stupid, it's good. It's so stupid, it's good. How did this whole thing come to be? Whose idea was it? You know it? what? Uh, a producer, a friend of mine, um, Alex Perry, he wanted to do it. He's he, he knows me and he knows Rob. He's good friends with both of us, and he thought we'd be able to make a good Funny or Die video. So he actually uh, directed it and produced it. Man, that was so good. What did you think about yourself watching that back? Oh, I think I'm an idiot. <laughs> you definitely I, weren't I, eating chicken I, snacks. Really stupid. <laughs> yeah. I... I it is funny, but it's not that funny to me. Um, uh, probably because I was in it. <laughs> well, that and you had not yet discovered chicken snacks. I noticed, especially when you were wearing that little bikini out on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you, looks like you had just enjoyed another Easter candy splurge. <laughs> oh man! But listen, Rob was great. I don't know that he gets the credit for his charisma. Oh, uh, you do you them know? all, Kurt. You do them all. You like, do them he, all. He is so articulate the guy guy really is talented and he 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 gets a bad rap for his promo abilities he's really good at it well buddy let's get to the, the fan questions as we wrap this one up uh, jason bala says when they had that triple threat match at no mercy we talked about it earlier rob was cast at that match as a heel despite clearly being the fan favorite to win the whole thing did that put you kurt in a tough spot trying to work as a baby face in that match Wait, which match was it again? This is that No Mercy 01 where it was you, Austin, and RVD that the McMahons interfered with. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was tough um, because a lot of the fans were rooting for Rob. Yeah. Um, and, and, hey, hey, don't forget, Stone Cold was in the match, too. Mm. You have diehard Stone Cold fans, regardless whether he was a baby or a heel, fans were cheering for him. They always were. They were, even when he had incredible heat. They appreciated Stone Cold for his talent. So, really... If you think about it, we had like three baby faces in that match. It was really hard. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, one fall wrestling. What is your favorite memory of RVD? Oh gosh. Uh, probably doing the funnier diving. Yeah, that was yeah. classic. <laughs> you know what? I think it was the first time he didn't smoke <laughs> and he was, but he was still good. So and he was still good. Yes. Yes. Uh, Charlie's up next. What was your reaction when RVD became a WWE hall of famer? He deserved to have his, uh, his, I feel like, and this is a good point, Charlie, he deserved to have his ceremony with a live crowd. Remember he went in during the COVID year when it was, you know, there was really nobody there, dude. Yeah. It sucked. It was just bad timing for Rob, 
but he deserved it. And yeah. they, they had to put him in there. Uh, could they have waited? Yeah, but they would have had to pick somebody else. So unfortunately for Rob, it was during a, a COVID year and uh, he wasn't able to do it live in front of an audience. And, and that is kind of sad, but he will go down in history as a Hall of Famer in WWE. Absolutely. Keith Lang Langley's up next. Was Rob Van Dam one of your favorite opponents to face in the ring? You said it here. I yes, mean, yes, definitely my top 10 or 12, without a doubt. Uh, Rob Van Dam's up there. Uh, I always have like a top five, top 10, <laughs> but now I'm going to, I'm like opening it up. I'm making it bigger to top 12 just so I could put on. I know you need to, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if I had, if we had, I don't know, a dollar for every time you threw out top 10, top 12. I mean, we've listed 50 names at this point <laughs> in the show. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to pick. Man. <laughs> I get you, dude. I get it. I get it. All great performers that you, you've been able to work with. So, but yeah, top 10, top 12. That's just an overarching statement to me. Kurt thinks very highly of them. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> James Chadwick, Chad Simpson says, Hey, Kurt and Paul, Kurt, out of all the guys that were part of the invasion angle, was RVD the one you were most excited to work with? Also, how similar is his skill set to HBK? Oh, wow. Uh, that's a good comparison. Rob Van Dam and HBK. I'd say HBK is a little better athlete. Rob was just more flexible. He, you know, he did more kicks and stuff like that, more karate type of stuff. Yeah. But their, their, their styles were identical. They both could do aerial stuff. They both wrestled heavyweight style. Uh, very, very, very identical. So I see that. Yeah, I can see the comparison there. And was he the most excite, uh person that you were most excited about to wrestle when the invasion happened? Yes. Yes, it was. And, 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 you know, Taz is up there too. Um, but, but, you know, Taz came in earlier before that, I believe. Right. Yeah. And I know how to answer this prior. one for you, Kurt. I know how to answer this one for you. Uh, uh he was in the top 10 to 12 <laughs> of people he was looking forward to face in the invasion. <laughs> no, no, listen, I, I am going to say this. Rob was definitely top two. It was either <laughs> Well, you, you had Taz at his guarantee. You had Taz at his opening match ever Madison square garden his debut. So there you go. Uh, Eric Campanella is next. Were you ever on the receiving end of a misplaced frog splash or were they always right on the mark? Uh, for me, fortunately, they were always on the mark. Thank goodness. Cause those frog splashes, they're stiff as hell. I mean, Anything that Rob does, any stiff that he's ever given anybody, the frog stat, frog splash hurts like a son of a bitch. Even when he hits it right, it hurts. Here's the other move, and Adam B is right where I was when I was asking you if you ever tried the split-legged moonsault. He wants to know, what would happen if you ever tried to pull off a van terminator or the angle, he called it the angle nader. So that's where you put the chair up, you jump from the top rope all the way to the other side. Do you think you could pull that one off, Kurt? Without breaking my neck, probably no. <laughs> yeah, see that broken freaking neck, just like the T-shirt yep. says, uh, it would explode once again. So there you go. <laughs> Man, this was a fun episode. Love talking RVD. Kurt and I had a lot of fun with it. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Kurt, next week we're going to be uh, turning the show over to the viewers because... It's ask, ask Kurt, Kurt anything. anything. And man, those are my favorite. Cause I love to run off uh, on tangents with some of that shit. And we're going to have some fun. So guys be creative, have fun. And, uh, we're going to have fun putting Kurt on the hot seat as we get to ask Kurt anything. And, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So head over to our social media. Twitter is the best place. I can tell you if you're an ad free shows member, throw them on Patreon too. But if on Twitter, use hashtag ask Kurt and we'll be the, uh, happy to answer all your questions. So do that. Remember, check out all of Kurt's past top impact moments. I mentioned an impact episode where he fought uh, Rob Van Dam impact wrestling.com forward slash packages and sign up with the code Kurt. What is that? Kurt K U R T. Uh, that's what you do uh, over there. And then ad free shows right now. They're offering a free trial. Don't miss it. They're just, uh, all your favorite wrestling podcasts, including a brand new one in may the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase is joining ad free shows. And, uh, that's starting just at $9 a, 
a month, and you can enjoy all of it for free for the first week. So sign up, start your free trial, and find out what ad-free shows is all about. Kurt, I think you remember this guy, Jim Johnston. He created the soundtrack for a lot of the nice, WWE nice. wrestlers for a long time. He yeah. just did a sit-down with Conrad and took him behind the scenes of how he created the themes for The Undertaker and really Stone cool. Cold yeah. and Ultimate Warrior and even your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle. And uh, he was instrumental in coming up with your, your theme. Yes, so, he was. He's very talented. He does a, uh, a full sit down. It's on video. He's like playing the piano and showing how he came up with the, the themes for everybody. It's really cool, man. So, uh, check it out. Adfreeshows.com is where you get to do that. Also want to, uh, pitch, uh, the live experiences at Adfree shows. As I said, Kurt and I are going to do ask Kurt anything. We're going to do that one live for ad free show members. So they're going to sit here and watch us and comment as me and Kirk talk. And yes, my style, I like to go to the comments and read them as we record and have fun with those guys to interact. So definitely be a part of it. If your business is targeting 25 to 54 year old men, and I'm telling you 54 year old men, Kurt, how old are you? 54. <laughs> I mean, that's our demographic. Okay. Right there. There's no better place in the advertise than right here with us on the Kurt angle show. You've heard us do ads for some of the same companies for years, and that's because it works. And with our super targeted audience, there's very little ways. So go to advertise with angle.com right now and find out more about advertising right here with the Kurt angle show. Listen, we're going to have fun with it. We're going to talk about your product. We're going to make sure they know how to find it and uh, make sure that it helps drive revenue uh, for you and your product. So advertise with angle.com right now. And Kurt, your Olympic hero angle will talk about your product and deliver that message to a broad audience. So check it out. Also want to mention our social handles before we get to physically fit for Kurt, you can go ahead and start finding those chicken snacks because I'm coming to you here shortly. But you can find I'll, the, I'll the letter to read first. Oh, that's right. We'll do that. Okay. So the angle pod, youtube.com, the angle pod, that's where you're going to be able to watch us on video. Hit the like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and then the show handles at the angle pod. If you want to find out what's going on with the bunny rabbit with Sonny this week, you need to follow. <laughs> at the real Kurt angle on Instagram and at real Kurt angle on Twitter, Instagram, I feel like is more, even more entertaining. So at the real Kurt angle on Instagram, I'm at Paulie B. Well, and I'm boring as a uh, as shit. So, uh, but I would love to, uh, to, to follow you and check you out there. But before we get to those chicken snacks, Kurt, thanks for reminding me. Kurt has a letter that he would like to read to all of our listeners. Kurt with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. This is why I do do, or I did what I did. This is, the whole reason why I got into pro wrestling and why I had a passion for it, it was because of the fans. Because the fans, you want to give them incredible moments that they can they can enjoy together as a family, as friends, you know, as a unit. And uh, when you have a fan, when you make an impact on a fan, the way I did with this fan, it makes you feel really good. And it makes you know why exactly why you were doing it. You're doing it for the love of the fans and to make sure that they have incredible moments to share the rest of their lives. And this is the letter. This is what this is. His name was James. It says to the Olympic gold medalist. I know it's probably weird getting a handwritten letter from a 35 year old fan, but I really like to share this with my father's favorite wrestler. Mm. Growing up, my father was a football player. He played for the 1976 Indiana state champion football team, Maryville, Indiana. He wrestled as well, but football was his expertise. This, this writing is really messy. As a kid, I never wanted to play football. Even when I've been a wrestling fan for my entire life. My mother and father were divorced. My dad was a millwright and traveled a lot with his job. My dad was in Atlanta when you won the gold. You became his hero. WrestleMania 18 was the first wrestling pay-per-view my father and I watched together. He had no idea you were a professional wrestler. So when he saw his hero wrestling Kane... He got pretty excited. He didn't get ex happy excited about much. We uh, we friendly argued who would win between you and Kane. When you won, he gave me this cocky grin and said, "You can't beat what's unbeatable." From that point on, you were on. If you were on a pay per view, um, he uh, if you were on a pay per view, view he would watch. September 16th, my blood sugar uh, level went up to 400. 
I sat in the hospital for um, a week, geez, getting pumped with fluids and antibiotics. I would lay there at night um, in the hospital bed, and I would think about my dad and moments we had. Mm. Our Olympic hero, one of my nurses, Jillian, would uh, come in and ask me if I was okay at night. And I would tell her if Kurt Angle won an Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck, then I was going to be okay. January 16th, I had to have my spinal infusion surgery due to my car accident. I was kind of nervous before my surgery. A few hours before, a Kurt Angle video popped up on YouTube. After watching you beat Kane at WrestleMania 18, I know I was going to be okay. April 15th, I returned to work. You give people hope. You're an inspiration. I can't thank you enough for the memories with my father and the strength you gave me when I needed it myself. God bless you and your family, James. Wow. That is a letter from a fan that I had a huge impact on. Oh, geez. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I forgot to flip it over. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. There we go. To make a long story short, this is where I messed up. My dad and I had a love-hate relationship. When I got older, uh, it was a very toxic relationship. Toxic, to say the least. Back in 2019, my dad had a stroke. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in life, it takes terrible things to happen to bring people together. For the next two years, I would sit with him, and we would watch. Uh, if we weren't watching Bonanza or Gunsmoke, i pull up YouTube, and we'd watch our Olympic gold medalist. I swear to you, when I get him in his bed, he'd have more strength after watching your matches. His favorites were you and Brock and when you teamed up with Benoit. August 16, 2021, my dad and I watched you wrestle for the last time together. I put him in his bed. He told me uh, he was proud of me. And two days later, on August 18, 2021, he passed away. I can't thank you enough for the memories. Fast forward to November 18, 2022. I was in on my way to work. I hit a patch of ice and flipped my car over and broke my collarbone in half um, uh, and punctured my spine. I got a hernia, too, and, and I was able to pull myself from the wreckage. But not even a, even a month later, I nearly died from the hernia breaking through. So that's the part I missed. So uh, I'm no, sorry. I read it in the wrong order. But what I was trying to say was this guy wrote me a letter. Um, his dad wasn't uh, a wrestling fan, uh, but he was a fan of mine. And his son was a wrestling fan. The kid was a wrestling fan. And they got together. Their relationship got better because of me, because of watching me, because of me. And, and, and that, that means the world to me. That, that tells me how much of an impact I put on these fans and, and what they do in life and how I, I could be um, very motivated for them. And it uh, makes me feel good that um, I'm able to do that for them. It brings families closer together. That's what wrestling does. That's what it's all about. Man, thank you so much for sharing that, Kurt. And James, buddy, uh, you have been through it, my friend, um, not only with you know, the loss of your father, but also uh, the physical things that you've been through and the, and uh, whether it's the, the diabetes, the, 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 the surgeries, uh, the accident, all that. But uh, just to hear how much Kurt has had an impact on you, on your family, uh, reconciling with your dad, truly moving. And Kurt, thank you for sharing that with us this week. Sure, Paul. Well, buddy, uh, I don't know how to transition from that, but I guess we're going to do the best that we can. And it is kind of time for you to talk a little bit about your chicken snacks. Kurt, before, as you do, though, I did have someone ask me, Is uh, are the chicken snacks, um, are they able to be sold and shipped over to the UK? Do you know? There, that's going to happen in the next couple of months. We have a new deal. We have got new investors. We found distributors that are in Europe. So that's going to happen very quickly. We're also going to be in Australia very quickly. So these things are incredible. They're called chicken snacks. And one's called chicken snacks. One's called snack smart. And they're both crispy protein bites. There's a um, high protein, low carbohydrate, 11 different delicious flavors. You're going to love them. Go to physicallyfit.com, physicallyfit.com to order yours. Use the code Angle Angle uh, Angle Pod. I'm sorry, yep. Angle Pod, and get 20% off your first order. Or you can become a lifetime member and get 20% off the rest of your life. Just sign up on the website. Uh, the chicken snacks are incredible. They are, and uh, if you just watched the Funny or Die video not too long ago, they work. It's obvious. Okay. <laughs> 
I have no room to talk, buddy. Hey, I've been That's walking, man. Listen, it's uh, this is great weather, at least here in PA, where you and I are. It's 86 degrees. Uh, over here. Crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's a great time for you to take uh, ownership of your health, and chicken snacks are a great way to go. Also, don't forget KurtAngleBrand.com. Whether it's a birthday card, a cameo video, uh, you know, whether it's a cowboy hat or a milk carton, or some Kurt Angle t shirts or autographed pictures, whatever the case may be, Kurt, they can find it over on your website. Yep. That's right, Paul. Autographed photos, uh, birthday cards, cowboy hats. Uh, we, we got everything, t-shirts, cameo video messages, go to Kurt Engelbrand.com, order whatever you want. And I'll send it right to you. There you go. Also check out box And we are just shilling left and right box and, uh, find that, that, uh, Kurt angle show merchandise. It'll mean a lot to us. Broken freaking look, we're representing today. I got the broken freaking neck t-shirt on you're wearing the That's Kurt awesome. angle show t-shirt. And, uh, I mean, this is life. This is our life. And we hope to make impact on your life and that you're enjoying the show and you're able to support us that way. But Kurt, it's time to wrap up. Thank you so much for doing the show with me this week. I had a lot of fun this time, Paul. It was a lot of fun. I really love enjoying doing the show with you. Ah, I love it too, Kurt. Well, listen, on behalf of your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle, this is Paul Bromwell, and we'll see you right back here next week for Ask Kurt Anything right here on The Kurt Angle Show.